Hi, this is Sholavon, MD, and welcome to my video entitled How to Memorize Heart Murmurs. This video uses a mnemonic strategy called the Memory Palace, which is something I teach on my website, sholamd.com. So go there if you'd like to learn more and get some cool study guides and tip sheets. So let's talk about cardiac murmurs. I'm a dermatology resident now, but during medical school, my first organ block of second year was cardiology, and the Cardiac Murmurs Memory Palace was one of my most frequently used palaces. This is very high yield for direct questions on step one, and also for overall clinical picture questions. For example, they won't ask you a question about aortic stenosis or tell you a patient has a history of aortic stenosis. Instead, on boards, they will, ask, they will describe the findings on physical exam, and you have to use the information about the patient's murmur to answer a related question, like why is this patient having syncopal episodes. So when I took cardiology, how did I approach the material on murmurs? How does a person create a memory palace? Well, step one is to identify the most important information, like I've talked about in my five-part study strategy planner. If you didn't watch the video about my five-part study planner, drop me an email at info at sholamd.com and I'll send you the link and sign up for my mailing list so that you don't miss out next time. As part of the first step of my study strategy, I read the course notes before lecture. I created flashcards as I read using Anki, and I did this as I read through the very first time when everything was novel and fresh. Based on the lecture notes, I thought about the broad categories that naturally separate the material, and then based on first aid, I created placeholders. For example, in thinking about heart murmurs, there are two major divisions, systolic murmurs and diastolic murmurs. Now, every school's curriculum is different, so there may be things that fit into this category that your professor has decided to leave out of his or her lecture. For example, when I learned about heart murmurs, the lecturer didn't talk at all about patent ductus arteriosus, or PDA, which is both systolic and diastolic. That came later when we did embryology. This is where first aid comes in. You'll need to use first aid to find out if there are placeholders that need to be in your palace, spaces that you kind of reserve, knowing that later on you'll fill in that information when your school's curriculum presents it to you. So even though you might not be hearing about PDA right now, when you do learn about that murmur, there's a place for it in the murmur palace. To recap, step one includes reading the lecture notes, creating questions, and skimming first aid. Then we move to step two, which is organize the material into a framework. There are a few different ways to organize material into a framework, but my favorite is the memory palace. Ask yourself, knowing the number of rooms that I need, what location can I use for this palace? For me, with Murmurs, I used an office building that I worked in right after college. It had two major groups of offices with a bridging area and the right number of subspaces for each murmur. So going back to this slide, I knew that I would put the systolic murmurs in the corner where the marketing staff used to sit and the diastolic murmurs over by the conference room. PDA was right between the two in a little room where we kept the promo CDs because that's a systolic and diastolic murmur. By looking at first aid, I knew I would need five rooms in the systolic area for each of the five identified systolic murmurs and two rooms in the diastolic area and then one connecting space for PDA. Um, so I, once I had the overall map laid out and knew which room I would use for each murmur, I started to fill in the details. Now it's important to note that all of this is still pre-lecture, so I hit the high yield, things that were in first aid and also in my course notes. So for aortic stenosis, I put five buzzwords into my palace, crescendo decrescendo, ejection click, pulsus parvus etardus, SAD, which is syncope, angina, and dyspnea exertion, and paradoxical splitting. In the memory palace, you make up your own images for these buzzwords. So for crescendo decrescendo, I had my boss, you know, we were working at a music label, so I had my boss turning up and down the music. It kind of worked out perfectly. And as I was doing this, I was documenting everything in Word. It is so important to document your palaces. Make sure you know what each visual trigger is supposed to signify. Otherwise, later on, you'll be asking, you know, why was that supermodel running on a treadmill? Also, when it's time to study for boards, it will be so quick and easy to refresh the knowledge because you've written everything out. Now, I can't tell you my entire palace because I put a lot of inappropriate things in there. Like one of my bosses was kind of an ass. Uh, so that was perfect for aortic stenosis, AS. That went in the boss's office in the corner, which worked out well because it's really the most important murmur clinically and it got the big corner office. Remember, images work better if they are funny, sexual, or profane, and I would always make my images more outlandish or dirty if I ever forgot them. After a while, some of them are pretty graphic, and that's okay. This palace is just for you. You can make it however you want, as raunchy as you want, as long as it helps you remember the material at test time. So let's go through the rest of the buzzwords that need to be in your palace. So for mitral and tricuspid regurgitation, holosystolic, high-pitched, a blowing murmur, Rheumatic fever and infective endocarditis, and a brisk carotid upstroke for a mitral regurgitation. 
or ventricular septal defect, also holosystolic, harsh, associated with congenital anomalies like Down syndrome, and tetralogy of Fallot. For mitral valve prolapse, late crescendo, mid-systolic click, chordae tendinae, myxomatous degener degeneration, and Marfan syndrome. For hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, outflow tract obstruction, autosomal dominant, B myosin heavy chain mutation, Friedrich's ataxia, sudden death in young athletes, and bisphyrian's pulse. And then for patent ductus arteriosus, which is systolic and diastolic, uh, it's continuous, machine-like, associated with congenital rubella or prematurity, prostaglandins for patency, that's a good one because of the P's, it's easier to remember, and then endomethacin can close a patent ductus arteriosus, and the way I remembered that was window methacin, like you close the window. And then for aortic regurgitation, now that we've moved into the diastolic murmurs, this is high-pitched, blowing, decrescendo, has a wide pulse pressure, which is associated with bounding pulses and head bobbing, also a bisphyrian's pulse, and Marfan syndrome. And then for mitral stenosis, there's the opening snap, delayed rumbling, rheumatic fever, and Ortner syndrome. Ortner syndrome is kind of a, uh, a zebra, but it's kind of a cool extra thing to know if you ever get um, pimped on it during wards. All right, so remember that uh, as you go through these, the key is to make really vivid images for each of the buzzwords and to put them in the location that you are keeping this group of facts. So all the mitral stenosis facts would be in one area. And, you know, if you have four images that go along with each of these four buzzwords, they would all be together in that area. And then to memorize, you kind of walk through your palace in your mind, um, visualizing all the images that are associated with any given disorder or bacteria or fact. Remember, having a vivid, well-organized memory palace only helps if you can back it up with conceptual knowledge. I wrote a few ideas for questions that you should be talking through with your study group. These are things that aren't well suited for a memory palace, but that are high yield for step one and the wards. The first one, for example, is what happens to the pressures in the four chambers of the heart with each murmur? That's something you can't really put into a palace but you need to understand it to really use your palace well. Where does each radiate? This is easy to understand anatomically without needing to necessarily memorize it. What are potential causes for each murmur and what is the pathophysiology? What makes each murmur worse? Squatting, hand grip, valsalva, inspiration, expiration. That's a very high yield. And finally, what does each murmur do to the cardiac pressure tracing? So these are all really good things that you should be able to conceptually talk through with a study group. And then here are some useful mnemonics for cardiac murmurs, rile. Um, it helps you remember that right heart murmurs are louder on inspiration and left on expiration. Frequent friends are the recurring images that will appear in a few different places in your overall palaces. So it's good to make them vivid and become familiar with them. For example, Marfan syndrome is in my aortic regurgitation room, but he's a frequent friend. So I have a single image and I use him every time. And he's in a bunch of other palaces as well. For me, it was a patient who I saw first year, and he was very striking with you know, two rows of teeth, classic Marfanoid appearance. And so every time that I have something related to Marfan, he's there. And so it's easy for me to kind of scan my palaces mentally across every organ system and think about where I see him. So aortic regurgitation, men to be, berry aneurysms. And then when I get a multiple choice question on boards that deals with Marfan or has that as one of the answer choices, it's kind of easier for me because I know all the associations. And then finally, here are some practice questions. So I searched online and found a good free online resource for practice questions on cardiology and wrote down just the numbers related to murmurs. If you remember my five-part study strategy, practice questions are a key component, so definitely use these. I'll be creating more Memory Palace templates as part of my online course and sharing a few abbreviated versions in my podcast. So if you aren't signed up for those yet, please visit um, memorizemoremedicine.com for the course or sholamd.com for the podcast. Um, and get on the mailing list, and that way you'll know about future videos like this when they come out. Thanks for being with me today. I hope this video helped illustrate the mechanism for making memory palaces, and I will see you next time.